And I must say, I was uh, triggered by today's topic or by the topic that they asked me to talk about that smart cities and e-mobility. Because I see many opportunities and it makes me think of things that always trigger me. Innovation, renewable, advancement, flexibility, creativity, future, city. Smart cities seems to be a buzzword, word, but actually it isn't. Smart cities refers to the answer cities could give to the need how to deal with energy in a sustainable way. And let's be honest, that is really a challenge. Actually, the result is a tangle of issues. But in order to, make not, to not make a tangle of my speech, I wrote a number of questions to gather my thoughts. First, why do cities offer such great opportunities in approaching the energy issue? And second, what actually are smart cities? And in which ways cities can become smart? And then to finish, how can we cherish this, these urban dynamics? And let us start from the beginning. Why should we involve cities in the solution of the energy issue? And we are facing, in fact, with major challenges in the energy policy. We need much more energy efficiency and we should use low carbon energy sources. These energy challenges present themselves even sharper in cities with their greater population density and their high energy demand due to the fact that there are a lot of companies also nearby cities. And formulating an answer to these challenges is not straightforward at all. A few examples. Energy saving measures often earn themselves back, but are often not taken because of some so stubborn obstacles. Wind and solar energy offer great opportunities, but because they do not have any consistency, our cumbersome power system suddenly needs to start working flexibly. And last week, a councillor at my office put in at a meeting like this, we must make an elephant dance, and that is not so easy. Our approach, so our approach must be smarter, more differentiated, more flexible, and let us be honest, we are still learning that in Flanders, like in the same in a lot of other countries in Europe. And in this regard, cities offer special opportunities to address these challenges innovatively. They have the perfect scale for this. They are large enough to act decisively and small enough to deliver customized solutions. They are large enough to achieve economies of scale and small enough to bring commitment and support into practice. They are large enough to combine different types of energy consumers and small enough to be able to work very motivating. They are large enough to be able to test things better on a lab scale and small enough to put up as pilot projects as a living lab. The scale of the city very well matches the tendency of a central energy supply to a more decentralized energy supply with more local production uh, units. And for me, that is really very important. At this moment, we are working with the central system, nuclear and fossil, and we must go to a decentral system with much more renewable energy. And the scale of the city very much is in line with the trend toward collective solutions. Whereas in the past, the energy policy often focused on improving the energy performance of individual houses and individual companies or the placement of individual production facilities for renewable energy, in the coming years, the focus undoubtedly should shift more towards public services as well as towards a collective approach. And just think 
of the strict renovations that can work mobilizing additionally and can be cost effective as well. Of just think of collective heating systems and heating networks which can provide even larger efficiency gains. And think of cleverly designed business areas with synergies can be developed. Cities not only have the ideal scale for triggering rapids at the local level, the desire to do that is also expli explicitly present in most cities. Because many cities already have the explicit ambition to become climate neutral, and many cities have already joined the Covenant of Majors, in which European cities commit themselves to significant cuts in CO2 emissions through energy efficiency and renewable energy. And of course, cities are also very close to the population, so they can uh, implement uh, very fast crowdfunding so that the population is also very close to the change and the shift in energy from that central system to a decentral system. So cities have large ambitions, but what are they actually that really smart cities? That was my second question. By all means, it is clear that sustainable cities will also have to be smart cities, since if one wants more renewable energy, then also a smart energy system that can respond flexibly to the fluctuating nature of wind and solar energy is required. Moreover, smart energy systems in cities are needed not only in response to more renewable energy, but more smartness is necessary because energy markets change as do the pricing. And such a smart energy system goes far beyond the introduction of smart meters and smart grids with dynamic transformers. We need to build flexibility into all components of the energy system. So that means that apart from the fluctuating renewable energy supply, we also need flexible uh, backup, like gas power stations, which can switch rapidly on and off. Such conclusive flexible range does not occur by itself. And but not only the offer must be flexible, so should the demand. On the demand side, we can all not only save energy, but also shift consumption in time. The, the more flexible the demand, the lower the peak demand and the less backup capacity that is needed. And in addition to smart grids, also interconnection with other regions can help to cope with fluctuating energy sources. And furthermore, also storage of energy is a promising uh, track to follow in order to introduce flexibility in the system. Batteries, buffers, power to heat, power to gas, etc. Also, electric vehicles may play a role as well as electric heating systems such as heat pumps. And I must say that we have more and more in Flanders uh, initiatives that um, they build uh, uh, solar power plants and wind uh, mills um, with, with the help of the population and with a kind of crowd uh, sourcing. And I think, I really believe in it also, the Netherlands have a lot of projects, uh, projects concerning that uh, crowd sourcing and crowd funding. And I think it's an ideal system when you are working with a decentralized system then it's the ideal system really to do it together with the population. But how a city, how do you become smart as a city? Firstly, the three most crucial concepts in the con coming years are data, data, and even more data. You gave in your, you gave in your introduction uh, a link with a lot of companies who are gathering data in, in a way that it's uh, very impressive. Because data about consumers and their consumption, data on providers, data on forecast production, data on grid, data on new techniques and applications, controls, new governance models, ICT and energy, it goes hand in hand. 
And secondly, quite some investments are needed. That is to decide in uncertainly, preferably with an open mind, but that's a huge financial challenge which, com with, which competes with other investments that are needed. An integrated approach is necessary here because investments in school infrastructure, roads and industrial parts, parks all have a direct or indirect impact on the energy issue. And contacts with network operators, for example, to align the expansion of their networks as much as possible to the desired urban development and to give shape to the flexibility on these networks in a proper way. But also helping to set up in innovative financing schemes such as ESCO funds, contributing to group purchases while watching over quality and service, and also leading contacts with local residents in the right direction with uh, planning new wind turbines in the best possible way. Uh, and that, that the last example is really very important for me as a minister responsible for energy. In practice, our cities actually often, often already are pioneers when it comes to energy and climate policy and these dynamics we certainly share. So cities do not have to invent the wheel again every time, so they can learn from each other and so their activities are well coordinated with other policy levels, allowing their knowledge to flow through, uh, through, towards higher policy levels, etc. So much is happening, but the challenges to sustainable smart cities towns remain large. And it remains large, uh, but that's the reason why I think that we will need a lot of uh, seminars like this seminar and to think about the financing system, but also uh, think about the way in which we can organize it in a good way that it, will, it must go uh, fast. And you talked about the disruptive. Everyone is disruptive. I saw it on the last slide. I think also on the energy issue, a lot is changing. It's changing in a fast way, in a very smart way, and I think it's very important for the population, for the cities, but also for my level, that we can adapt ourselves as quick as possible. Thank you very much.